Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about technology and how quickly it advances, okay? And is it worth your money to actually buy the top spec line item, right? And then, you know, hold out longer until the next generation, next, next, next generation comes up where you have to upgrade, or do you just get the middle of the line or the bottom line item and just upgrade every generation, right? That's what seems to happen nowadays, right? So nowadays technology seems to advance so quickly. There's so much competition, driving innovation, all that kind of fun stuff. It seems like every time anybody releases something, marketing is really good at doing their job and trying to tell you exactly why you need the top spec one, right? Or how much better it is than the previous generation, right? So a lot of that stuff may be important, but on today's episode, we're gonna be talking about Apple computers, right? But more specifically around their MacBook lineup, okay? So for me, uh, I personally use these uh, MacBooks uh, to edit videos and post them online, obviously for like a video like this, right? A lot of people may use it to do a bunch of other stuff. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you if you're trying to find a video that has full spec, detailed comparison of every single laptop like that, this is not the video for you. Who this video is for is if you want to know, does upgrading MacBook laptops for the use of Final Cut Pro really worth the money? And pretty much maybe which spec model you would want to get for that then you want to stick with us mainly because we're going to be taking the latest version of final cut pro on each computer that's possibly out right now and then we're going to be using an app called chrono x to export those projects and then time them and figure out how that really goes okay so we did purchase all of these a lot of their own monies we did purchase the app uh, all this stuff. We did edit all these videos and stuff like that. So none of this video is sponsored. Nobody gave it to us. This is just for our own understanding. And hopefully it helps you out in case you did want to know. Okay. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and say all the footage that's edited on these uh, Final Cut projects are exactly the same because the same project is copied into all the laptops and they were all recorded on an iPhone 12 mini at 4K at 60 hertz, okay? So uh, if that's what the rare footage is, we'll eventually just throw up a graph and we can talk about the results at the end. But the laptops we're gonna be comparing is the M1 Max, right? I think it has like 64 gigs of RAM and all that kind of fun stuff. And then the M2 Pro and the M2 Max. And then we're gonna figure out how does that really work and then then we're going to be taking a comparison to an Intel i7 2016 based laptop uh, to figure out you know how much of a leap in performance was gained by moving to these newer laptops right or if it was gained at all right personally speaking I think it was because I can feel the performance uh, in just every day using the computer or whatnot and editing especially it's huge difference so but we don't know the numbers right so that's what we're here to find out so if that's what you want to know Stick with us. All right, so what you guys just saw was the same Final Cut project being copied to all the machines and then we used, you know, after everything's been background rendered and that kind of fun stuff, we used Chrono X to do the export of the projects, all right? So the data that we're looking at here is purely just the export time of the projects and the footage we used was uh, footage that we, we were editing for another video, but it was uh, shot on iPhone 12 mini 4K at 60 hertz, okay? so. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. The first machine we ran it on was the M1 Max. Uh, this machine is uh, eight performance cores, two efficiency cores, but 32 GPU cores, okay? 16 uh, cores in the neural engine. And we used the latest version of the OS available for each machine, and also the latest version of Final Cut available for each machine, okay? So uh, the first run took 5.15 seconds, or 5.15 minutes. The second run took 5.1 minutes, averaging 5.12, right? Then moving on to the M2 machines, let's look at the M2 Pro first. 
Uh, this one is also running 14.4 and 10.71 for final cut and eight, eight performance cores, four efficiency cores, so that's two additional efficiency cores, but this machine only has 19 GPU cores, all right? Uh, and also 16 just gigs of memory. So not complete apples to apples, but you know, let's go take a look. Uh, the first run, 2.31 minutes. Second run, 2.3 minutes, averaging 2.305 minutes, all right? Uh, so that's almost 100% improvement or 50% improvement, depending on which way you're looking at the numbers. But it's, you know, over two times faster than the M1 Max. All right. So looking at the M2 Max, let's go take a look at that. Uh, the main difference here is that this has 38 GPU cores and 96 gigs of memory on this machine. So the first run, uh, 2.13 minutes. The second run, 2. 21 minutes all right so the averaging the two took 2.1 minutes this machine and or all of these machines so far ran it on uh 1071 and 14.4 of osx so if you want to take a look at the numbers let's go take a look at what the biggest difference here was right the biggest difference between the m1 max and the m2 is pr probably pretty much the generation of machines right they all have eight performance cores the m2 pro has two additional efficiency cores right but this, uh, even with 19 GPU cores down, or 19 GPU cores versus 32 GPU cores and less memory, it is still two times faster on the export of this media, okay? So if you look at the M2 Max, which has the same number of uh, CPU cores, right? But it has all, uh, two, more than two times, or two times, uh, double as many GPU cores and more memory, it did gain an efficiency improvement in terms of time performance, but it was not significant, right? Yes, I guarantee you if you're using like red footage or, or uh, 8K or any of that stuff, stuff that's heavier than let's say 4K 60 hertz a shot on an iPhone, then yes, you'll probably see a huger gap here. But in terms of the footage that we're using, it's not a huge difference here, right? The biggest difference here was really gained from jumping from an M1 to an M2 platform, right? So if you're really trying to answer, well, you know, how does all this perform if you're on an Intel machine? Well, let's go take a look at that, right? So we ran it on the Intel uh, i7 based machine, and this machine is from 2016, and we ran the latest version of the OS available, which is 1274. Uh, this machine obviously doesn't have all those efficiency cores and that kind of stuff, but it is running a Radeon, a Radeon Pro 455 at 2 gigs, and it does have 16 gigs of memory on the computer. All right, this machine also runs 1068 of Final Cut, and it is the latest version available for this machine. Now, I'm throwing this in with a disclaimer mainly because when you're downloading Final Cut or updating, it says there's a later version available, but you can't download it for this machine uh, because it doesn't support Oh, you need a later version of the OS and the OS and this is the latest version available. So, you know, there's some argument that 10.7 has a uh, huge uh, software improvements, but it won't matter to this machine because you won't be able to get that on this machine. OK, so looking at the numbers, first run 12.19. Uh, second run 13.47, averaging 12.83. Right. So if you're trying to figure out um, is an M an Apple Silicon based machine, a, a, a worthy upgrade over an i7 machine if for final cut video editing or exporting, the answer to that question is definitely yes, even if you go with an M1 based machine, right? But if you are going to uh, upgrade from an i uh, Intel based machine to an Apple Silicon based machine, I would highly encourage you to go with the M2 based machine, mainly because M2 based machines um, on the recertified market from Apple recertified, you can get them from roughly around, you know, uh, I would say I saw them for about 15 to 2000 maybe starting, uh, depending on the specs that you pick, would be a huge improvement if that's how, you know, you're doing work all the time, that huge improvement is going to be realized very quickly, right? Uh, while we're talking about that, uh, the numbers here are only export times, right? But the other things you need to take away from this is there is background rendering, import performance, you know, summarized performance, all the efficient, uh, 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 you know, summarization icons and all that stuff, right? That all stuff is a huge improvement. I can tell you immediately off the back, uh, just workflow improvements are huge going from the I, uh, Intel based machines to the Apple Silicon based machines. Um, if you're trying to answer, should you go from an M1 to an M2 based machines, you know, that's really going to be depending on you, right? Sure, the uh, performance is, I would say, probably double, right, in terms of export performance, right? But is the cost really worth it? 
uh, only you can answer that, right? Because it depends on how much of this work that you're really doing, right? If you're doing it occasionally, probably not. But if you're doing it a lot or if you're using much heavier footage uh, media, then the answer is probably yes, right? Um, so we're going to have to figure out what this performance looks like when we get an M3-based machine. We just don't have one of those right now. Uh, this M2, These M2 machines right here, I know they've been out for a little bit, but we've actually purchased it this year right in 2024 so you're not getting a huge uh, decrease in performance right we'll have a better answer for that when we test an m3 machine right but if you're trying to figure out did we hold out a long time from a 2007 base machine to to uh, uh m1 max machine we did right and was the performance worth it when we upgraded to the m1 most definitely final cut was using so much better um, it didn't sound like we had a rocket ship in the room and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, hopefully this video helped you guys out answering some of these questions. But uh, like I said, keep in mind the footage we're using is iPhone 12 uh, shot footage and it's 4K 60 hertz. I know a lot of people are using a heavier, denser, uh, more clear or HD type footage or even 8K, right? So, um, and the codecs you're going to be using are actually really important here. So, like I said, these numbers are normalized to as much as I could get them to. So, uh, hopefully, like I said, this video helped you guys out. If you have questions, let us know. Otherwise, have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time.